Now, when it comes to the fair value of consideration transferred, it can entail four things. Follow me carefully. So depending on the question, you may have to calculate it. The first component of fair value transfer is where the company does a cash consideration. This one, you don't have to think about it. It says they acquire 80% of the shares paying $200 million. That is cash consideration. So that is the first component of the fair value of consideration transfer. You don't have to think about it. But there is another one. It is called deferred payment. Deferred payment. Now, what is deferred payment? This is where the entity is bound to make what? Some payments in the future. So even though they've acquired the company today, right now, this year, they may not have paid all the money. And so they will be paying some of the money in the future. So if they will pay some of the money in the future, then we have to discount the future payment into what? Present value. So the deferred payment will find a present value of it using the uh, borrowing rate or the cost of capital of the parent as a discount factor. That will be brought there. So that's the second component of fair value of consideration transfer. Please note that anytime there is this deferred payment, we need to unwind it and charge finance costs every year. So we need to charge finance costs on this deferred payment. That finance cost will be the present value we will get here times the what? Cost of capital. And that figure we get will go to the group retain earnings as a deduction because it's a finance cost. It's a finance cost. It will go to group retain earnings if we are preparing statement of financial position. That is group statement of financial position. But if we are preparing group statement of profit or loss, it will be taken to what? Finance cost in the income statement. So let me take that again. The entity may make deferred payments. What it means is that the entity will be making some payments in the future as a result of the acquisition. Nemo, because it's in the future, we must bring it into today's term. And we will use what? The cost of capital of the parent. But anytime there is deferred payment, please remember that we must unwind it to calculate what? The finance cost. That finance cost, if you are preparing group statements of financial position, will deduct it from group retained earnings. But if you are preparing group statements of profit or loss, it will go to what? Finance cost. Third component. Share exchange. Share exchange. So what is share exchange? One way companies uh, finance acquisition is that they won't give the owners of the company any money. But they will give the existing shareholders rights to own shares in the parent's company. So that is where there is share exchange. Please note that anytime there is a share exchange, you must use the share price of the parent's company. You must use the share price of the parent's company. Why? Because it is the parent that is issuing the shares. It is the parent that is issuing the shares. This statement here is very important because when we get to the workings of non-controlling interest, I will bring it back again. So make sure you get that. So for instance, let's pull a, a scenario up. Net Limited bought 2,000 shares of the 2,500 shares in Ham Limited. The acquisition was financed by a share exchange of two shares for each five shares acquired. The share price 
of the entities are neck limited hand limited so let's say neck is 2.5 dollars hand is 3.2 dollars so this is the illustration we are pulling up Now, so what do I mean by that? If you see a question like this, there is no cash consideration. There is no deferred payment. But there is what? Share exchange. Meaning that is what will come here as what? Our consideration transferred. But how do you go about it? So if you check, number one, you can decide to do a group structure. Here you are not giving the percentage of ownership. So how do you get a group structure? They acquired 2,000. The total share is what? 2,500. So percentage of acquisition will be 2,000 over 2,500 times 100. What we got? That should be like 80% or so. Yes. 80%. So if we want to draw a group structure, it will be net limited, having 80% in harm limited, with an NCI on the side of what? 20%. So that's the ownership. But the thing is financed by a share exchange. Remember what I said. If there is share exchange, use the parent's what? Share price. So what do we have there? Number of shares acquired. 2,000 shares acquired. Acquired. Okay, so 2,000. So if they are doing share exchange, what will it be? So let me even go straight to that. If you are doing share exchange, it will be 2,000. We give you two for every five. So it will be two over five times two. I can just do two over five like this. Times the share price of the parent company, NEC. Does it make sense? We acquire 2,000 shares. We will give you two shares for every five share we acquire. So it will be 2,000 divided by five times two. Make sense? Then we multiply it by the parent share price. That's very critical. What you got? 2,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that becomes what? The fair value of consideration. So assuming in the question, this was the only statement about the acquisition. It should be more than 2,000. It should be less. How much did you get? This will be 4,000. So 85 is 2,000. 2,000 times 2 is 4,000. Mm -hmm. Divided by 5. Right. It's 800. It's 800. 800. Oh, okay, okay. I was looking before the final. Oh, so. okay. Okay, so times 2.5. Give you this. So if this was the only thing we were giving, then the fair value of consideration would be that. So that is the third component of fair value of consideration. Sweet, straight to the point. I just like, I've gotten the explanation. Okay. My issue previously was when I should multiply it by the parents. Or the staff. Or the staff. That's I admit I will do it. That's it. So now you've dealt with it. So always when a share exchange, you use the share price of okay. the parents. Can I clean this guy? Please, I'm going to go here. Sometimes uh, they, will, they, will, they will give a lot of uh, narration going here, and sometimes they even the same part of the print we are at the top. Why the, the full notes are dealing with a lot of prices and they become confused? <laughs> so, it all depends. That is why we will be, when we start solving the question, I will be guiding you on how you have to be reading the question. Do you get it? So that once you read a preamble, you know what you are supposed to do. When you read notes one, you know what you are supposed to do because this information could be in the preamble or it could be in the notes one or notes two. So whichever way it is, the preamble will guide you how the thing is being financed. So once you know how it is being financed, then quickly you must know what do I need. Are you getting the idea? Then you will be getting those things, either in the footnote or still from the preamble. Fourth one, that is my favorite. It is called issue of loan notes. Issue of 
loan notes. Issue of loan notes. So that's the fourth thing. So as part of the financing of the acquisition, the parent company can issue what? Loan notes to the uh, owners of the business. So it's the opposite of share exchange. Instead of giving them ownership, this time around we would make them what? Creditors of the parent company. So that one also sometimes it could be calculated just like the share exchange. So they would they may, the examiner could tell you that they issue ten percent low uh, hundred dollars loan note for every five share acquired. So if it says ten percent hundred dollar loan note for every five share acquired, how do you go about it? Hundred percent loan note. 10%. For every five share acquired. So, like I'm building on this question. Okay. So, we acquired 2000, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, how do we get a loan note figure? It's going to be 2000, makes sense, yeah. divided by 5 times what? Okay. $100. So, we give you $100 loan note for every five share acquired. So, it becomes 2000 over 5 times $100. This figure now will give us what? The loan notes for the question. So these four things added together is what sum up to become fair value of consideration transfer. Depending on how generous the examiner is, he can bring you two of them or three of them in a question. And that is how he treats them. Under the uh, issue of loan notes, yeah. I perfectly understand that. The temper, the interest on the loan note, won't it have any effect? Good. Spending? So we will pay the interest on the loan notes, and that will go to the same issue. We will deduct it, like just like the finance cost on this guy. Mm -hmm. So we will deduct it from group retained earnings. That is, if we are preparing statements of financial position. Mm -hmm. But if we are preparing income statement, that interest will go where right. to finance cost under the parents' schedule, right. under the parents' schedule. Mm -hmm. But remember. When you go to the balance sheet, it will not be there. Because one rule about consolidation is that the parent is not supposed to owe the subsidiary. The subsidiary is not supposed to owe the parent. So when you go to the balance sheet, that loan note should not be there. It should not be part of the loan note on the consolidated financial statement. It will be on their individual accounts, but you will go and cancel it out when you are doing the consolidation. That's very important to do today. Okay. So that is where it's one um, transfer, uh, fair value of consideration transfer. Let's go to where it's two, NCR.